Okay, here's the computer looking at the output from the ESP8266. It's flashed with Tasmoda firmware. And this is the data I'm getting out of the PZEM016, which is the AC. And the one I actually showed is this one, PZEM017, which is the DC monitor. <clears throat> right now, um, it's only at 45 volts. Shows the volts, amps, watts, daily production. This is the AC one, showing the output of my inverter, AC inverter. <clears throat> so anyway, <clears throat> this Tasmoda firmware was really easy to set up. Flashed it, did the configuration for my module, which in this case was the ESP32 Development Kit 1. And all I had to do was plug the two wires into the GPIO 01 and 03 and then select the the proper pin assignments which Tasmoda makes real easy because all I had to do was see I'll click on this one it shows you all the selections all these different sensors you could select different functions um, there's quite a bit of things you can do but anyway the PZ EMs were supported, so I picked TX up here on this GPIO one, and I picked the receive here. That's all I did. And then when I you save it, it restarts your ESB eighty two sixty six or ESB thirty two in this case. I won't resave it now because it's already saved. Go to the main menu and all this all this data fills in it can't be easier to do and to set up the mqtt you just go to configure configure mqtt you put in the ip address for your raspberry pi or mosquito wherever wherever you're sending your mqtt data to could be a different site but in my case I just put in the IP address for my Raspberry Pi which is on my local network here I didn't fill in any of these other things I saved it restarts the SP32 and then uh, to to make sure it's working go back to the main menu you go to the console the console is just a screen looking at the data so I have all the showing all the data coming you can change the period the amount of time it sends this data by doing teleperiod command teleperiod And you can see mine is set for 10 every 10 seconds. So if I put teleperiod 20, it'd be every every um, 20 seconds. But I did it with nothing; just shows what I had. So every 10 seconds, it's sending it. <clears throat> so here's the um, here's the topic you want right here. What I do is I just go on here and copy and paste. Copy this and um, then what I have is uh, let's see if I can do this. Here's the program I use to look at some of my Raspberry Pi files. It's called Notepad. And 
you can put a plug in and can have it connect to the Raspberry Pi. So I'll do that here. You can see all the files in the Raspberry Pi. What we're going to do is go to the, to the IoT stack, which is where um, we want to find the telegraph file to set up. And then I go to volumes. And that is where these, all these are all the programs installed on Raspberry Pi. Grafana, Home Assistant, InfluxDB, Mosquito, NodeRed, Portainer, Telegraph. So we want to go to Telegraph. And here's the telegraphconf.conf configuration file. Nice thing about this program is I'm looking on a Windows computer, so it takes it from the Raspberry Pi Linux and puts it on this computer. So here's that comp file. And um, this is already set up. The classic GitHub DIY page will show where how to um, install this, where you can get a sample of this. Telegraph Conf, and anyway, here here's the topics, and I took that one sensor that I copied, and I pasted it in here, and then I saved it, and so that's basically all I had to do um, to get that over to the next stage. So this this plug in here gets it from Mosquito gets the MQTT from Mosquito, it, grabs, it gets these topics, and then it sends it to Influx. So when you save this, then you'll go on and um, restart your, your um, Telegraph program. And since I modified the Telegraph comp file, I want to restart Telegraph. I would just click here and do um, restart. So I don't have to restart the only thing. It'll just restart that one container. Anyway, this Portainer, Portainer is a program running on there that is really um, quite helpful to know what your Raspberry Pi containers are doing. For example, you can go to <clears throat> Telegraph and then Logs. And you can make sure that you don't have errors. Everything's running okay. Same with any of these other programs. And it also shows what port number they're on. So right now I'm on uh, my local network. 192.168.356. Remember, I pointed the MQTT data to that, to the Mosquito. And um, anyway, Telegraph program is going to grab that information from the Mosquito that's running on here. And then it's going to send it to InfluxDB. InfluxDB right here. We can go look here. You can see it's writing. It's writing these um, all the data every so often. So, what we ultimately want to do is get the data to Grafana. This is Grafana. Okay, I mentioned the classic DIY. It's a um, GitHub page. Right here, the address is pretty simple, classic DIY, and this is developed quite a bit for the Midnight Classic Solar Charge Controller, but there's some other projects that are useful for other things too. So the one we've been talking about is Classic MQTT. So if you go to that project, there's some info here, how it works, and the part we want to go to is 
this classic MQTT wiki. And then this, this will show you how to set up on the Raspberry Pi. And there's some detailed instructions here that will tell you. The one I use is this Docker. This is the easiest one. So, um, well, actually, the easiest one is this. Using IoT Stack, which is a Docker, but it, it simplifies the setup. So you could click on this link here, and it shows all the things you need to do to set it up on your Raspberry Pi. And it also goes into some of the other things that we were talking about as far as setting up a um, the uh, parts you need for telegraph and influx and all that. It has uh, troubleshooting here. This part you don't need, but you can use it. Um, MQTT FX is to test to make sure your MQTT is working. Anyway, um, this will help you get that figured out.